Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Timbridge Methodist Church's Zoom service for Sunday, the 21st of July. This morning, the address is by Reverend Jill Daniels. Jill's theme for this morning is Take Courage. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. And we start our service this morning by singing in Christ alone. Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to be with you, even though it's digitally in this time of worship. But it's good to worship God, isn't it? In the Psalms, in Psalm 31, 24, it says, Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who hope in the Lord. Today, we're going to be looking at what it means to take courage and what God says in his word about taking courage. And we're looking particularly at the story of Abraham and Lot, 
which is a continuation of the last time that I spoke with you on Circuit Zoom. So it's a, a follow on, it's a sequel to when we talked about decisions last time, if you can remember that. But first, we're going to pray together. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, it's always good to be in your presence. It's always good to spend time in your word. It's always good to come close to Jesus. And Father, we thank you so much that you sent Jesus. He is the answer to all our needs, our worries, our concerns and our problems, because we find peace in you, Lord Jesus. Today, Lord, as we look at being strong, at being faithful in the time of difficulty, help us to learn from Abraham and his strength and his courage, how he was willing to do and to lay down so much in order that someone else might be saved. And loving Father, we thank you that you did everything to ensure we are saved that we were rescued from the pit, we were rescued from despair, we were rescued from sin and shame. We praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you are our rescuer. You took the courage, you took it to the cross and you stood for all that is right and true and you saved us. Well, thank you for all the wonderful messages which are found in scripture, which point to the salvation of God. And here in this passage of Abraham and Lot, we see the love and the salvation of God depicted through Abraham as he rescued his nephew, Lot. So, Lord, we give you praise for this morning, for the week that we've had, for our breakfast on our tables, for all the great joys of looking out of the windows and seeing perhaps sunshine, perhaps rain even, but all the glorious array of, of colours and senses that we see every day as we look out of our windows. So Father, we thank you for your world and all that we enjoy. And we pray that together, as we gather in your name, we will all be blessed as we hear and share in the word and the presence of God together. And this we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Shall we say the words of the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from the message, Genesis chapter 14, commencing to read at verse 8. That's when the king of Sodom marched out with the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is all. They drew up in battle formation against their enemies in the valley of Sidim, against Corleoma, king of Elam, Tidal, king of Goim, Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Ariak, king of Elatha, four kings against five. The valley of Sidim was full of tar pits. When the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, they fell into the tar pits, but the rest escaped into the mountains. The four kings captured all the possessions of Sodom and Gomorrah, all their food and equipment, and went on their way. They captured Lot, Abram's nephew, who was living in Sodom at the time, taking everything he owed with them. A fugitive came and reported to Abram the Hebrew. Abram was living at the Oaks of Mamre, the Amorite, the brother of Eskol and Anah. They were allies of Abram. When Abram heard that his nephew had been taken prisoner, he lined up his servants, all of them born in his household. There were 318 of them. 
and chased after the captors all the way to Dan. Abraham and his men split into small groups and attacked by night. They chased them as far as Hobah, just north of Damascus. They recovered all the plunder, along with nephew Lot and his possessions, including the women and the people. Amen. Our next hymn is Lord, the light of your love is shining. reading is from Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 18 reading from the new international version the UK of the Bible the armor of God finally be strong in the Lord and in the mighty power in his mighty power put on the full, full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, 
and against the, the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to the, all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the, the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying by all the Lord's people. Amen. And our next hymn is Faithful One, So Unchanging. Father, I simply ask that through my words, your voice will be heard. Amen. Last time I spoke on the circuit Zoom service, I spoke about making decisions. 
We left Abraham at the trees of Mamre where he pitched his tent and built an altar to the Lord and generously and unselfishly let Lot decide where he would live. And he fitted his own life around Lot's plans. And in the same way, <clears throat> sometimes we need to trust people who are younger and less experienced to make their own decisions, even if they get them wrong. And that's what happened there. Lot chose the fertile plains and the corrupt cities of Sodom came with that decision. And that really was his downfall. And here in the passage now, we find that he's been taken captive by some kings. So I want to look at taking courage because first of all, number one, take courage because God brings victory. We find in the scripture that a fugitive came and reported to Abraham the Hebrew. And when Abraham heard that his nephew had been taken prisoner, he lined up his servants, all of them born in his household. There were 318 of them and they chased after the captives all the way to Dan. I wonder if you've ever had any sudden bad news and you have to act immediately. You have to make a decision. And for Abraham, this was a decision of great courage. God loves to bless and bring victory. And I wonder if you're facing trouble today and whether you need courage for what you're facing. There was an 85 year old lady one day who was sat on a bench in the garden by the pond. She was catching some sunshine and when she suddenly heard a little voice, pick me up. She thought she was dreaming. She looked around her but had no idea where the voice was coming from, so she closed her eyes again in the sunshine. A little later she heard the voice again, pick me up. She looked down and there by her feet was a talking frog. Are you talking to me? she asked. Yes, said the frog, pick me up and kiss me and I'll turn into a prince. So she picked up the frog and put it in her apron pocket. Hey, what are you doing? said the frog. I said, pick me up. And if you kiss me, I'll turn into a prince and you will be a beautiful bride. No, thanks, said the lady. At my age, I would rather have a talking frog. <laughs> you know, over the years, as time rolls by, if we're not careful, we end up risking, giving up, taking risks. We stay in the safe zone. We never trust God for those big leaps of faith that we might have made when we were younger. And it's important that we keep that risk taking, not to stay in the safe zone all the time. You see, the danger is that as time goes by, courage fades away. We have no courage to try new things. And then we don't see the victory that God can give us. Sometimes we need courage to try new things, to take new risks, to step out in faith in our church or as in individuals. I wonder if today you face giants like David the shepherd boy who took up all he had just as slingshots. Sometimes courage is a choice and we can miss out on blessings if we don't take them. The courage to walk into a new fellowship or a church group on your own. The courage to admit we need help. The courage to face an operation. The courage to stand up to bullies. The courage maybe to buy your first home or to start a new business or make that long journey that you've been avoiding. Sometimes it takes courage to leave a job that we're not happy in and find something else. For some people, people need courage just to step outside their front door. Maybe you need a courage again to start a diet from eating too much salted caramel ice cream or Cadbury's dairy milk chocolate. And sometimes I think it requires a huge amount of courage to share our faith with other people in this day and age where it, the faith is not always welcomed. It takes courage. Maybe that's the greatest courage we need today, especially in our churches. So for Abraham, there was an occasion when courage was required overnight. He found himself in a dire situation, a dire life and death situation. He was living at the Oaks of Mamre. He'd moved houses, possessions, everything he owned, and he was committed to this new area, a man of faith, trusting God in this new home, a new start, a new beginning, new hopes. 
And moving house can be stressful, but can you imagine moving as he did? Thousands of cattle and sheep and his servants. I mean, I can't count sheep at night, so I've no idea how he counted thousands of his sheep. And at this point, he probably hadn't even unpacked the sugar bowl or the kettle, let alone the toaster, as he just moved house. But then suddenly, unexpectedly, the worst nightmare was sprung upon him. He needed courage, probably bigger than he'd ever needed before. Because four kings had captured Sodom and Gomorrah and had captured his nephew Lot, and an escapee had come to tell them the news that he'd been abducted and he was in very grave danger. What would Abraham do? Only earlier, Lot had made the decision to choose the wonderful fertile plains, but also the city of Sodom and Gomorrah with its reputation. And Abraham had made him or allowed him to make his own decisions. So now he's been captured, would he say, stupid boy, I knew Lot would make that silly decision and get caught up in that godless, God forsaken city, Sodom and Gomorrah. He's the only one to blame for getting into this mess. He doesn't deserve to be rescued. He made his bed, he must lie in it. Why should I help him out when it's his own stupid fault? But no, Abraham knew what had to be done and he did it. He took courage. His nephew had been captured. It was his duty to rescue him back. He was a true man of God. He put his family first and did the honourable thing. He was probably completely terrified. He was completely non-judgmental, but also totally terrified, I'm sure, because these kings had already defeated Sodom and Gomorrah and looted those cities. Abram didn't relish fighting or risking any of his 318 men or getting injured or killed by this powerful army, but in faith and in courage, despite his fear, despite his terror, he chose to, to seek the victory and to rescue his nephew back. Lot with his family, whether he'd messed up or not and made bad decisions or not, he was going to rescue his nephew. And so he lined up his servants, chased after the captors all the way to Dan and Abram and his men split into small groups and attacked by night. They chased them as far as Hobah, just north of Damascus, and they recovered all the plunder along with their nephew Lot and his possessions, including the women and the people. He took courage and God gave him the victory. I'm, I wonder if you've been thrust into requiring courage at the moment to face something big. You know, these acts of courage can happen any time. We need to trust in the fact that God gives victory. A few weeks ago, instant courage was required when two teenage boys in Yorkshire, Freddie Corbett, age 15, and Harley Hollingworth, age 16, they spotted a man in distress on a railway platform one Saturday night. He was in a sleeping bag and he jumped onto the tracks, expressing his intention to take his own life. Without hesitation, Freddie and Harley leaped onto the track just seconds before an oncoming train was due to arrive. They managed to get the man off the track and pinned him down until help arrived. They just demonstrated remarkable courage and bravery, only concerned for the man's safety. We never know when courage is required of us. So secondly, first of all, God gives victory, but secondly, as we take courage, God can deliver us too. God brings deliverance. In this story, he delivered Lot. He delivered Lot through his uncle, Abraham. God is a restorer of what is lost. Lot was delivered from harm and saved from his enemies. In Deuteronomy 30, verse 3 onwards, we hear that God, your God, will restore everything you lost. He'll have compassion on you. He'll come back and pick up the pieces from all the places where you were scattered. See, God wants to deliver you today from the enemies and the ground that's been stolen from you, even when it is our own silly fault. Loss of direction, loss of faith, loss of health, loss of confidence, loss of relationships. 
And God delivers us. He saves us. God wants to deliver you and me from Sin City as he delivered Lot through his uncle Abraham. There was a young lady who was strimming her garden one day, but she didn't notice her cat dash, dash past and accidentally cut off the cat's tail with a strimmer. Well, she held the tail, she tried to hold the cat, she called out to her sister, quickly, drive me down to Tesco's, I need to get there really quickly. Her sister said, why would you want to go to Tesco's? What can they do? Don't you know, sister, she said, they're the biggest retailer, retailer in the UK. God is in the business of putting pieces back together. Lot was delivered from his enemies by Abraham. And that's all for me symbolic of how God rescues us from the tarry pit and sin city. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us that we too would be rescued. Lot didn't deserve it. He didn't earn it, but he was rescued, saved and delivered from the hands of his oppressors because he was loved. And that's why God delivers us too. It's like a forerunner of Jesus saving us from the hands of our oppressors, from the hands of sin. So God is in the business of deliverance for you and for me. I wonder who you need to be saved from today. And we need to remember that when God sends an agent to save us, we should never worship the agent, only the God who authorised the deliverance. Abraham was faithful. He thought he could sit back in the promised land and enjoy it. But tragedy stuck, struck and he rose to the occasion. I wonder if you've gone astray a little bit. Watch God at work as together he can help to bring you back. Know his deliverance today. Even when we've made a mess through our own fault, God still loves us, still wants us to come home. Maybe you know people who've fallen away, gone to Sin City, fallen into drugs, alcohol, gambling, addictions, or fallen into crime. And maybe it's their fault. Some might say it's their fault. But God does not judge. He forgives those who call upon them and sets us on our feet again. And he will send agents like Abraham to rescue you. Perhaps you know family members who have gone astray, got themselves messed up, journeyed towards a sinful place like Sodom. <clears throat> you warned them, yet they still went ahead. You knew they would get messed up, but you couldn't stop them. They were stoically deciding to make that choice for themselves. Maybe they've chosen to shoplift or drink drive or move in with a witch or a Satanist or an alcoholic, or they've chosen to smoke and drink, ruin their mental and physical health. And you have to stand back helplessly as Lot decided to do when he went to Sodom. But God rescues us, hallelujah, no matter how many times we've messed up. And let's have the patience of God as we deal with those tragedies in our family lives and allow God to send out his armies to fetch you and others back. So Abraham represents the loving fatherly care of God, our heavenly father, who will rescue us. I got swept away once, and if anyone had ever told me that I would be swept out to sea, I wouldn't have believed you, but that's what I did last year. I tried my hand at windsurfing. I mean me, I'm over 60. I spent the whole time getting on and wobbling off, getting on, wobbling off. And all the time that I was getting on and wobbling off, the wind was taking me out to sea. The tide as well just kept taking me far out to sea because unless you have your sail up, you will drift. And every time I did this, I was so busy concentrating on what I was doing, I wasn't afraid. I wasn't scared that I was out of my depths. And the reason I wasn't scared was because I knew there was a rescuer. I knew that if I got out of my debt, I would be rescued. I would be delivered. And I think it was a number of three times that the jet skis, my rescuers, came out to hook me up rescue me and drag me back. And afterwards I thought, as I looked out to sea and the distance that I'd travelled, I thought, gosh, did I really do that? 
but I knew I had a rescuer. Today, as a Christian, as a believer, you can know you have a rescuer, even though you or others may have been swept away spiritually towards Sodom and Gomorrah, God wants to deliver you and bring you back. God says, I will restore you. I will rescue you. You are mine, says the Lord. Let God deliver you today and bring you home. Finally, as we take courage, God protects you. Abraham took courage. He was successful and God protected him and they all came home safely. In this story of Abraham and Lot, we see that God wants to protect you, those who love him. We see many in the Bible who've taken courage and stayed safe, like David when he slew the giant, he was kept safe with a sling. Moses faced Pharaoh, he was kept safe with a staff. Mary faced the death of her son Jesus, kept safe by Jesus' instructions and also given a loved disciple to look after her as Jesus was on the cross. Scripture says, I can do all things who, through Christ who strengthens me. And in our second passage, we hear about the armour of God, which reminds us that when we wear the armour of God, when we step out in courage, we will stay protected. If you need courage today, tell yourself, I have the Lion of Judah on my side. He is stronger than any opposition. We are equipped when we stay in God's armour. A mother camel and her baby were lying down one day, soaking up the sun, and the baby camel asked his mum, why do we have these big humps on our back, mummy? Mummy stopped to think and said, we live in a desert where there's not much water available. Our humps store water to help us survive on long journeys. The baby camel then stopped to think and said, well, why do we have long legs with rounded feet? And his mummy replied, they are meant to help us walk through sand. The baby asked a third question. Why are my eyelashes so long, mummy? And the mummy replied, your long eyelashes offer you protection from sand when it's blown in the wind. Oh, and finally the baby said, well, if we have all these natural abilities given to us to walk through the desert, why do we live in a zoo? See, even camels are equipped. And just as we've heard from this passage, we are equipped through Christ true as well. God has equipped Christians. He's equipped us with strength, peace and power. And we do this by putting on daily the full armour of God the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, having our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, by taking up the shield of faith, taking up the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And we're instructed to pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. We are protected through God. Take courage today, Stand firm in the faith and the readiness that comes from the gospel of, of peace and faith, and we will be strong in him. And we will be able to do, to do all things he requires of us when we suddenly, or over a period of time, need to take courage. So today, take courage, draw on God's power, and he will keep you strong. He will bring you victory, he will deliver you, and he will protect you. May we trust God in this every day. Amen. Sometimes we live life in the middle of a storm, left out in the open, exposed to the elements. No matter where we look, protection seems miles away, shelter, feels out of reach. Lately, these storms have grown stronger, more intense, more difficult to bear. Where do we look when we can't see the way forward? How do we find safe harbor? In the midst of the ebb and flow, God promises to be our refuge and our strength. 
our ever-present help in times of trouble. In our most desperate moments, we can rest safely behind the rock of our salvation. Protected by the shadow of His wing, Yes, life has its troubles, but our God is a mighty fortress, our stronghold, our refuge. Now we will have our prayers of intercession. Father, we thank you that you are a God that loves and cares for us, that protects us, and that gives us victory over the things that we come across in everyday life. You care for us and you love us. Help us to pass on and show this love that you have given to us to other people that they too might know your love and care help us to share with this world and we thank you that not only do we have troubles and conflicts that we come across but we also have the beauty of this world that you created that surrounds us all the wonderful things that we can see and hear all the wonderful places that we can go and for we thank you for that we ask that you'll forgive us when we spoil it, when we mar your beautiful creation for our own ends. Help us to live lives that reflect this wondrous creation that you have given us. There are so many people that need our thoughts and prayers. We think of places where there's conflict, where man shows his true inhumanity to man, where people just become collateral damage, something that doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things providing our ends are met. But they're people, they're people that you love. Help us to love them too, and not just ignore them. We think of people that have problems in their own lives. As Jill said, some brought on by our their own actions, the things that they have done, the places that they go, the things that they see, but you still love them. Help us to love them, care for them, enough to pray for them. For people in our families, we ask that you will take care of them. Help us to help them get the victory over things that deflect and stop them from loving you. Help us to share our love. Help us to share your love with all of them, no matter what state they are in. 
to people amongst us that need your healing hand or the hand of comfort through loss and bereavement. We ask that you will be very present, that you'll give us words to say, that we might be doers of your word rather than just hollow sounds. There is so much that we need to pray for and so little time. We ask all these things in and through the name of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our final hymn is Facing a Task Unfinished.
forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. This service was brought to you by the Timbridge Methodist Circuit Churches. We trust it's been a blessing to you. If you wish to contact us, there's an email address on the screen. I'd like to thank Barry and Betty for reading I trust that God will bless you today and always. Thank you again for joining us. Amen.